Hello, and welcome to Morris Park. Today, I'm going to do a video on what makes a cactus a cactus and a euphorbia a euphorbia. I've been watching a lot of stuff uh, recently where people go to describe their succulents, and many of them describing their euphorbias as cactus. This is not so. These are completely different families, folks. While they may have some of the same shapes, like globular, columnar, tree-like, they are not cactus. The forms that these uh, plants have that may be similar, and as you see the same kinds of forms in these cacti here, is caused by what they call convergence. Convergence means that plants coming from the same sorts of environments grow in much the same ways. Whereas this plant comes from the Chihuahua Desert, very arid, and so it takes on a flat kind of uh, round shape and is buried mostly into the ground. The same happens with uh, plants like this. As you see the root down here, most of this plant nature would be buried up to the crown in here. This would just be sticking above the ground. Much the same as this areocarpus or these areocarpus. They all kind of stay buried in the ground until the rains come and then come back out. And that's uh, when they start to uh, grow, bloom, and so forth. But these plants grow in similar ways because they have similar environments to deal with. And that's pretty well what it is in the short of it that makes them look, even though they are not cactus, cactiform. Now when I say cactiform, I don't mean in the sense that they are cactus or related in any way. It's just they're shaped like cactus. Now both families are very diverse. Cactus having many forms, as I've said. But what makes a cactus really a cactus is aerials. Aerials with felt. You see on this cactus here, wherever these spines come out, there's like a white pad. Maybe you can see a little better. Anyhow, this white pad is what they call aerial. This is usually where branches grow from, often flowers. And they uh, are responsible for also the fruiting and seeding and general growth of the plant comes from these aerials. Most of your flowers will come from these aerials unless it's something like a mammillaria. Mammillarias often produce their flowers in between the tubercles. So the aerials which produce the spines that are on the tubercles don't necessarily produce the flowers on mammillarias. But all cactus have usually some sort of uh, fur, felt, hair, as in this uh, Cephalocereus senilis. Lots of hair. Or wool, such as these areocarpus. You can see this felty wool here. Other plants don't grow like this, um, other succulents. They don't have the uh, aerials. Or tubercles that grow this wool, hair, or their spines. This uh, Gymnocolysium uh, saglonis, you can see has very prominent spines sticking from the aerials. And if you look real close, you can see that felt sticking up. And the little bits of felt that are in the center. Same with this uh, Cereus spiralis. Note all the fuzz where the spines are coming from. Now they say this is where the flowers will come from also. And the fruit after the flowers. Another thing that uh, makes euphorbias distinctive is most euphorbias have a white sap. Now this is going to look funny. I just picked this out of my yard. Now... If you look closely, you can see that white sap coming from this. Now you're probably saying, what does this have to do with our succulents? Well, folks, 
that's the thing about euphorbias. Euphorbias are quite diverse. This particular plant is a euphorbia. Now, of course, it doesn't look like this. But if you look closely, it possesses one thing that makes it a euphorbia. These little seed pods here, if you look closely, they're a little three-sided seed pod. coming directly out from the flower. Now I'll show you this. Here we are again. There's that little seed pod hanging down from the flower. Three-sided. Euphorbias have a curious uh, way of dispersing their seed. When the pod is ready and dries, it will slowly split and then it will crack open with kind of a uh, spring-loaded explosion. And you'll actually hear the seed pods crack on some euphorbias and the seed being dispersed sounding like grains of sand being thrown across the greenhouse. Quite interesting. But yeah, um, almost all, all your euphorbias like this have the three-sided seed pod within their flowers. There we go. See that? very diverse group of plants euphorbias but this plant is in no way related to this this is a serious uh, spiralis and uh, it is a cactus or like this areocarpus cactus and the areocarpus retusus this is a very old one I've had for 36 years or like these areocarpus fissuratus with the wool to say cactus can be quite diverse, many varieties. Just like euphorbias can be quite diverse. Some having leaves in an herbaceous annual plant. This will die in the winter time. It will not come back from the same plant. It comes back from the seeds only. And of course, these growing for many years. Succulent and uh, perennials. But all these euphorbias have this white sap that comes out of them. Um, if you in injure any part of a euphorbia, usually you will see a white sap. And sometimes even just by rubbing one, this sap will come out. <clears throat> this sap is toxic to varying degrees, sometimes mildly. Sometimes a lot more toxic. Um, plants like the pencil euphorbia, euphorbia tergicale, have very uh, virulent sap. They, it burns your skin, um, not instantly, of course, but if it's left on the skin, it will burn. And can cause blindness in your eyes. Some of these uh, euphorbia saps even have a smell to them that, that's actually uh, quite stinky. And that's just to tell you, hey, I'm poisonous, leave me alone. But a lot of these euphorbias, as I say, they're very diverse. See, this one's like a uh, briar almost. It's a dwarf euphorbia milii. <clears throat> Some more of my euphorbias. This is what they call a Medusa head type. I'll bring this down and show you grows from a central head. And a lot of euphorbias seem to have this habit of growing from a central head, reduced main stem, uh, a caudex. You can kind of see that under there. Cacti don't seem to have the uh, Medusa head thing going on. They don't have that little reduced main stem where a lot of the branches come out as euphorbias do. And many euphorbias getting leaves, whereas also sometimes cactus get leaves, and some of the more primitive types. I don't happen to have any of those here uh, that I could show you, but they're, they are quite interesting. Anyhow, 
I just kind of wanted to show you the differences between uh, cacti and euphorbias and tell you folks out there they are not related. While cacti are succulents, not all succulents are cacti. And even though they may be shaped like one, it's not a cactus, folks. Euphorbia. Anyhow, I just thought I'd give you this little uh, video and let you know this uh, information because I've seen a lot of people mistaking them my euphorbias for cactus. Even uh, some of my friends that come in the greenhouse always ask about these cactus, and I have to say, hey, not a cactus. <laughs> Anyhow, this is Clyde Morris from Morris Park. Thanks for joining me this evening, and have a good night.